I told Karen that I slept with her husband. Okay, so I never thought I'd actually have my own story to tell on here. I'm still not completely convinced it wasn't a fever dream. If not for a neighbor dropping by to ask me what the heck happened last night, I probably would have dismissed it as a fever dream. But enough preface, let's get into it. So I was hoping, thanks to COVID, this wouldn't be a problem. But the kids in my neighborhood keep coming to my door on Halloween for candy. Every year I tell them that no, I'm not giving it out and to go somewhere else. I've also gone so far as to put out signs telling them to shove off and leave me alone every October. But the little jerks just seem to take it as a challenge. They'll repeatedly ring the doorbell until I come out or they get bored. Once they went five whole minutes before they went away. Or they'll keep coming back to my place after I tell them no, hoping I'll change my mind, which I never do. This year, one particularly persistent little brat from the next cul-de-sac over made it her mission to wear me down for candy every year. She rang the doorbell and I told her nicely, or as nicely as you can tell someone who repeatedly ignores the big red sign saying that my house is not for trick-or-treating, that I don't have any candy. She looks at me with what she probably thought were adorable puppy dog eyes and asks me if I would mind checking. I tell her there is absolutely no candy in my house, nor will there ever be. That was a lie, but she didn't know that. Then the little monster gets it into her head that I'm lying and keeps asking me if I'm sure. I tell her that I'm diabetic. I'm not, but she apparently doesn't know what that means. One Google search on my phone later and she accuses me of lying about having it. I mean, I am, but that's not the point. I suppose I could have just given her a Hershey bar, but I didn't really want her spreading the triumphant news to all the other little monsters of how she finally got the mean lady to succumb to her will, at the risk of any of them following her example. So I just tell her that I don't have to give candy to anybody who's going to be so rude as to deny my very serious medical condition, and I close the door. About an hour later, I'm hate-watching the Francis Ford Coppola Dracula movie. It's a train wreck, but I can't help it. Then I get another ring on the doorbell. I come down to find the little abomination peeking out from behind the legs of a very angry-looking entitled mother. The following exchange goes down. I say, how can I help you, mom? My daughter says you're repeatedly refusing to give her candy. I'm sorry, I don't have any. This callous attitude towards the festivities is unacceptable. It's Halloween, you should have prepared for it. I didn't think any kids would be trick-or-treating this year thanks to a certain virus. Well, after everything they've been through, we as a community owe it to them to make up for all the fun they've missed out on this year. I say, look, I get where you're coming from, but it's 10 p.m. I'm not going to get up and go pick up a bag of Tootsie Rolls at this ungodly hour just so that your one kid can have the full Halloween experience. It's here that Mummy Dearest takes it upon herself to give me a lecture on the importance of participating in the community. I told her that maybe if she wasn't such an entitled Karen, her husband would be more eager to participate in the bedroom with her instead of me. This is where I may have been kind of a jerk. What I said was nothing more than a heat-of-the-moment remark, but the woman went absolutely ballistic upon hearing it. She freaked out and started screaming about whether or not her husband was sleeping with me. Apparently the guy did go on some kind of business trip recently, and my little quip set off all the red flags in her head. She starts demanding to know if her hubby was in my house, trying to crane her neck around to see me inside and shrieking at him to come out. At this point, I'm tired, I'm on the verge of a food coma from all the grocery store goodies I've binged on, and I'm 100% done with all of this crap. So I tell her to come back with a warrant and I shut the door on her, in spite of her attempts to wedge her way in. I can still hear her meltdown on my way up to the stairs now joined in disharmony with her daughter demanding to know what is going on. I look out the window of my bedroom to see her angrily punching a number on her phone and dialing up who I think was her husband. The poor man got an earful. I didn't catch everything she said, but at one point she mentioned something about how he has no business cheating when she could have taken advantage of his absence with her brother-in-law after he came on to her at their anniversary party, but she had spared her husband's feelings by not doing anything with it. She's being so loud that she draws the attention of other trick-or-treating families in the neighborhood. Anybody unfortunate enough to ask what's going on gets treated to a first-hand soundbite of her marital problems. One neighbor goes so far as to come out of his house and asks her to take this someplace where she isn't 
disrupting the ambiance. This prompts her to turn her wrath on him and shriek at him to mind your own beeswax. This poor man barely gets away with his life. It was like watching an episode of Maury unfolding, if Maury Povich was an elderly Asian man. At this point, I was seriously scared that she was going to come and try to break into my house looking for proof that her husband was there. I considered just coming out and admitting to her that I was yanking her chain, but the ball was already in motion and I doubted whether my confession would save her marriage at this point. Fortunately, after she ended the call, she stormed off with her now hysterical crotch goblin in tears. I felt a little bad for turning what should have been a fun night for the kid into such a traumatic experience, but maybe now she'll not knock at my door next year. In short, kid tries to get her mum to bully me into giving her candy, gets her first-hand seat for witnessing the collapse of her parents' marriage instead. And to all the people telling me I'm a bitter, hateful hag, if not wanting to waste money contributing to strangers' kids' junk food addictions makes me a hag, then I guess I'm a hag. I can live with that. To the people telling me this story is fake because this could never happen at 10 p.m., you deeply underestimate how late kids are willing to stay up if it means more candy, as well as how badly some parents relish the chance to be free of their little angels for one more hour. As for why they're so obsessed with wheedling candy out of me, I think it's become something of a challenge in my neighborhood to finally get the mean neighborhood lady to crack, because I'm the only one in the neighborhood who refuses to partake every year. Other people eventually cave in and leave out bowls, but bowls run out and that means the little hell spawns get back to knocking, hoping you've got some extra Milky Way bars in your pantry to spare. Which is why I don't do that either. To the people asking me why I didn't turn off my porch lights, my neighborhood watch has this thing where you have to leave your lights on during Halloween so that the kids can feel safer and are less likely to get lost. If you don't do it, Everyone gets really hostile and passive-aggressive with you for the rest of the year, and it's really not worth it. That's why I put up the sign instead. To all the people telling me I'm in the wrong for thinking Bram Stoker's Dracula is a hot mess, it is. It doesn't deserve its status as an Academy Award-winning feature. The acting is either lackluster or way too hammy. The special effects have aged horribly, and at one point, Mina gets forcibly grabbed and pinned down by her one true love while she begs him to stop. So romantic. Truly a love for the ages. It's fun to laugh at as a terrible movie, but it's hardly a pinnacle of cinema. I won't apologize for my stance, except it. So with all said and done, am I the jerk? <laughs> well, author, you might be a bitter, hateful hag, but this was entertaining and I frickin' loved it. Why should you have to participate in Halloween if you don't want to? Where I lived growing up, you might have risked us egging your house, but obviously you feel like this is your stand to make, and you're absolutely right. That kid should absolutely have just quit while they were ahead. Accusing a stranger of faking a medical condition that you don't even know exists yourself is a risky game. And what do you get out of it if you win in this case? Nothing. The lady didn't want to give up her candy. I will say that the author's dig at the mother was mean and childish, but I still loved it. A bit of jerk-on-jerk -jerk action may not solve anything, but it sure gave us a good story. I'm sorry for the loss of your marriage, entitled mother. Maybe you can move on to the brother-in-law now and he'll treat you better. If not, put all that energy you clearly have into a worthy cause and turn away from the Karen lifestyle. Because screaming at strangers for candy isn't a good use of anyone's time. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out linked below. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Sending trucks to the wrong state to screw over a staff sergeant. So back when I was in my first unit, we had to ship all of our seven-ton trucks off to go get up armored. That meant over a year or so, so we shipped them all from South Carolina to Wisconsin. I was in charge of logistics at the time, so I coordinated it all and loaded the trucks. Overall, a pretty easy task. The only challenge was the documentation. Anyway, it was all going well until this new staff sergeant showed up in the motor pool. He was an absolute jerk. Just treated everyone like absolute crap. He made my life miserable when I tried to ship these trucks. Like, I didn't want to, it wasn't overly fun. Sometimes it even required me to work on weekends, so I'd have been happy just not doing it at all. 
However, I had to, as headquarters had ordered it, so there was no reason for him to be angry with me. Anyways, so once he took over, shipping these trucks became an even worse pain in the butt, because he'd want to micromanage, because I was lower rank. So I let him, and he wanted to sign crap. So I made up lines for him to sign. And then finally, I'd had it with him. One day, I decided since he wanted to sign and be important, I would screw him over. So when my next big shipment, like four trucks, came along, I decided that instead of sending them to Wisconsin like they were supposed to go, I'd send them somewhere else. I decided 29 Palms, California would be a great location for them. So I changed some codes on the sheets, gave them to the prick staff sergeant who made more jerk comments, and signed blindly without knowing what he was doing. So off we shipped these trucks. Well, a couple of weeks later, the call comes in that our trucks never arrived. So the command starts getting worried that a few trucks have gone missing. They came to our shop and we just informed them that this staff sergeant had taken charge of all the shipments lately. So they went to him and he proudly said he'd taken over but he crumbled when they asked him where the trucks were. It took them a couple of weeks, but finally a call from 29 Palms came into our command that they had these trucks show up, but nobody had claimed them. The command flipped their crap. As far as they were concerned, this stupid freaking staff sergeant got involved in crap he didn't need to get involved in and sent four big trucks across the country instead of where they needed to be. He got told to leave the logistics to the logistics department, and I had the whole thing solved in an hour. So for those complaining about taxpayer dollars, you obviously haven't been in the military. I had jerk leaders like this cost far more than a couple of trucks because they couldn't let the experts just do their jobs. One example was we had a C-130 fly from Bahrain to Jordan to pick up cargo. I was meant to load it, but the senior leadership didn't think I needed to go, because a random non-logistics officer was at that base to load. So the C-130 flew internationally to get the cargo, was never loaded, and then flew back. So the C-130 had to be sent back to Jordan the next day to get the cargo, all because someone had stuck their nose where it didn't belong. There are tons of other stories of crappy leadership messing up your tax dollars. After this, the staff sergeant never even stepped foot in the logistics office, so perhaps he learnt a lesson. What do you think, on balance? Am I a jerk? Wow. So this was eye-opening to the narrator in that it revealed that incompetent middle managers aren't just restricted to civilian jobs. Maybe I should have suspected, but I kind of thought that people in the armed forces would have better things to do than looming over their employees' work and creating more checks and balances to create the appearance of activity. But clearly, I should have known better. I do know that everyone I've ever known who's been deployed has essentially told me that their work is about 80% waiting around for things to happen. I guess if you're at a higher level, it must be quite hard to not look like you're lollygagging between jobs. As for whether the author is the jerk, I mean, yes, but a jerk vigilante to be sure. I mean, whether these trucks were driven or shipped, a massive amount of resources were put into their delivery, which was knowingly done in a way that would waste time and money to get a guy in trouble. But as our author explained, it likely saved the logistics department a lot of hassle in the future and probably re-streamlined things a bit. So we'll say that, once again, everyone sucks, but I do understand where the author is coming from. My grandma tried to ruin my brother's wedding. My brother's wedding was two years ago, but this still annoys me every time it comes to mind. My grandmother is rather histrionic. If she isn't the center of attention, she will make herself the center of attention. So, it was my brother's wedding and I was his best man. I have a tiny car and needed to be at the wedding venue early, and my grandma was going to be picked up by my parents later. She wasn't anywhere near ready and I needed to leave, so I assumed all was well at this point. We set everything up at the venue and took photos and got ready for the ceremony, and finally my parents arrived with my grandma in tow. She was already irate and causing a scene because I had, quote, abandoned her when I left her for the venue. We managed to get her to calm down, but I could see my brother was already getting disappointed with the situation. He just wanted everything to go right, and he's too nice to say anything to our grandmother. Things went okay for a while until we were seating her in the chapel, and she wasn't getting to sit with my mum and dad at the very front where the parents of the bride and groom had the place of honour. Once more, she made a big scene until she was moved to the front next to my parents. 
My brother was red with embarrassment as everyone from both families had pretty much filed into the chapel. Once more, things calmed back down once she had her way. The last straw was at the reception. Everyone was eating and having a good time. I was going around checking on the tables to make sure everything was going well and people were being taken care of. Then I got to my grandma's table. I don't remember exactly what she said, as I just kind of lost it at that point, and it was two years ago, but it was something like, Why is this taking so long? If they aren't going to get the reception moving along, I need you to take me home. And I replied with something like, I still have to give the best man speech for a while, and you aren't going to be asking mom and dad to take you back. Then she said the words, and she said this to me growing up all the time whenever I said anything about school or something I'd learned or disagreed about, and it basically instantly triggered me. The words were, Don't you get smart with me, you little crap. I saw red, and I said something to get her to come outside the venue, and then I got vicious. I didn't yell because I didn't want to draw attention to the situation, but anyone within line of sight could easily know I was really annoyed. I told her something along the lines of, You need to sit down and shut the frick up. This is my brother's wedding and he still believes you're this amazing person that he wants in his life. But I've seen through to the vile witch you are for years now. You mistreat and bully my mum and you're trying to do the same crap to my brother now. Your bullcrap will never fly with me. I know what you are and if you don't get back in there and pretend that you're having a great time, you'll have nothing to do with my life. She was weakly fighting back with, How dare you talk to your elders like that? I handed her the keys to my car and told her she could leave if she absolutely couldn't stand the reception, but if she did, she'd never be invited to anything in my life. Not my wedding, not my graduation, not even to see any grandchildren I might have in the future. I told her she'd be lucky if she saw me again before she died. Apparently, she either didn't care or thought I was bluffing, because she left. I haven't seen her since, which was my choice, and she complains to my mum that I don't talk to her anymore. I specifically sent her what looked like an invitation that told her she wasn't invited to my wedding. Then she wasn't invited to my graduation, and after learning about the racist comments she made about Caucasian me and my Asian wife, and how it was good we hadn't had any children yet because the world doesn't need any more Asian babies, I freaking hate her guts. I'd like to say some part of me still loves her, but after everything, I can't stand even the thought of her. If there was any chance I could forgive her for how she tried to ruin my brother's wedding, her racist bullcrap pretty much solidified my determination that she'd never meet her grandchildren, and that I'm not even sure I'd be willing to visit her on her deathbed. I don't know if I overreacted or if I'm a bad person for responding like this, but I watched for 18 years as she emotionally bullied my mum over and over again, and my dad by proxy. She had always doted on me and my brother, but when she acted like that at my brother's wedding, All of that came boiling to the surface and I tore into her. A lot of people are asking if my brother has seen the light, and the answer is kind of, but he's a lot nicer and more gullible than me and writes her crap off as, it's just how she is, but she's family. My grandma took great effort when we were growing up to let us know that blood is thicker than water and that your friends will always leave, but your family will always be there. I never bought into it because my friends were always more supportive and reliable than my family. My brother did buy into it. Oh, and my car was fine, she didn't sabotage it. That thought never crossed my mind as a possibility. My grandma is terrified of car wrecks due to a wreck in her youth that seriously messed her up. Also, I probably assumed that she was aware that I wouldn't hesitate to call the police on her or anything like that. What a vile, hateful old bet. You see, viewers, there are elder folks who say slightly questionable things because it's part of their ingrained vocabulary, and there are the same people who might still give a bit of side-eye to lifestyles that are strange to them, but who try and keep it under wraps and accept others as they are, and then there are people like this witch. To make things clearer for us, we're given a bit of perspective into how awful she was before she had the excuse of advanced age. A bullying, mean-spirited attention hog who couldn't go a few seconds without saying something mean for attention. At first, I thought the author's response was a bit sudden and extreme, but having the context of what he's witnessed from this woman his whole life gives a bit of insight on why he was probably justified in letting out some steam. It sounds like both he and his brother were way better off without the venomous crone darkening their wedding ceremonies, so I'd say everyone wins. Now, if you can just get your parents to stop moving on her whims as well, Maybe she'll have some time to reflect and come out of it better. Maybe not. Frankly, I'd say you don't have to care anymore. 
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to check out some great music, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.